This week is Bus Pirate Week at Dangerous Prototypes. We're going to be working on version 3 and version 4 all week long. If you're looking for a dependable Bus Pirate, version 3 is still the way to go. But hopefully at the end of the week, the firmware for version 4 will be more dependable and reliable than ever. We're going to do a number of fixes and also add some new features. Brent in the forum submitted a new one-wire library and also an Autobot detect feature uh, for the serial UR. Uh, if you're not interested in bus pirate development, head to the forum. We've got an interesting discussion going on about building a component detector that will measure resistors, capacitors, transistors, and report the type of device and the critical values for it. That should be a lot of fun too. But today we're going to focus on how to develop for the bus pirate. We're going to show you the integrated development environment that we use and also how we export the firmware that you actually load into your bus pirate for a firmware update. So to do that, I've got my trusty ICD2 PIC programmer. This isn't just a programmer, it's also a debugger. And what that means is we can also step through the code line by line and see how it changes values inside the PIC. That's really super helpful if you're stuck with a problem and don't know how to solve it. Uh, microchip uses this funky connector here on the ICD2 which isn't very handy. So I made this adapter which connects into the ICSP header on the bottom of the Bus Pirate like that. This is the Bus Pirate source code. It's available in our SVN. We do all of our editing and compiling in the microchip IDE called MPLAB. It's a free download from microchip site and we'll put a link in the post to help get you started. Version 4 and version 3 both share the same firmware source. The only difference is we enable a certain configuration for Bus Pirate version 4 and it includes the native USB support and a couple other features. This is the project for Bus Pirate version 3. This is the project for Bus Pirate version 4. We will do all of our development and debugging today on the Bus Pirate version 4 uh, for now. If we get into any hairy USB problems, we will move back and try it on the version 3. So to open it, we've got the MPLAB software already installed, so we just double click it and open it up. The source looks something like this. Over here you have all the files for the Bus Pirate, and then in the rest of it we have some source code already open. The first file you want to look at is base.h. That will uh, show you what version the source is currently configured for, if it's Bus Pirate version 3 or version 4. Also this is where the firmware version string comes from, multiple languages, and also you can configure what modules are included, that kind of stuff. If you're just getting started with the project for the first time, you may need to go project, build options, and down here at the bottom it says project, and check these directories to make sure that uh, it's searching the right place. You see I've got some custom stuff already included in here to get the right locations for all the files. You may need to adjust those to fit the way you set up MPLAB. Since we're just getting started, we will go ahead and comment out version 3 and enable version 4, and then we can push the compile button or the make button up here to build the project. So now we've got the proper version configured, we just push the make button up here and it'll, it will compile the source. And if we're lucky it just goes off the first time without doing anything else. Because all the bus pirate files are already included in the project, you don't need to get any additional projects and add them. So there you see we compiled it and our build succeeded. So now if we want to use this with the bootloader, we now say file export and you can just include the whole thing and say OK and stick that firmware somewhere, maybe we call it version A4, and now you can follow the usual Bus Pirate version 4 update method to load this firmware. For the version 3, however, you have to go file export, and you need to change this to A1FFA, I believe, and uncheck config bits. Uh, there's more information on this on the Bus Pirate compiling page, but the idea here is we need to clear the region where the bootloader resides, or it will throw an error. Uh, it won't hurt the bus pirate, but it uh, will throw an error when you try to bootload a version 3 firmware without setting that in configuration range. Okay. So now we've got the version 4 firmware and we can put it with the bootloader, but that's not very convenient. I'd rather use the debugger and the programmer. So we'll connect to the programmer 
and it says uh, invalid target ID and that's because the bus pirate isn't connected yet so as I showed before I will hook up the ICSP header to the programmer and hopefully we can say connect again and it finds the bus pirate so I don't think there's anything special we have to do to use the bus pirate firmware as is uh, with a programmer so we should just be able to say programmer program and it will write all the stuff to the bus pirate and we can test it out okay the programming was successful it verified okay so the next thing we do is we can this is a mess so the compile was successful now we can push this button to release the pick from reset and it should enumerate as a USB device if you're not sure which one it is open your device manager or whatever you have on your system and look at the COM ports here we'll release it and it attaches as COM port number three we can test it out using a terminal so we have the terminal and we'll say new connection connect to COM port three and then we can hit enter to see if it replies which it doesn't so now the programming was successful it verified the chip and everything looks good we can push this button to release the pick from reset and it should enumerate as a USB device if you're not sure what port it's on it will appear here on under your serial ports so if we release it come over here we'll see COM3 is added to the system to test it out we'll open up TerraTerm and do new connection with the terminal to COM port 3 bus pirates responding and we can get info and see the firmware version now just to walk you through a simple change let's actually update the version here to A4 and the way we do that is we look in base.h and we come to the firmware section here which should be version A4 and that should be all we have to do now we can compile the firmware again it'll take a second because we made some changes one important thing is to remember to disconnect TerraTerm before we reset and reprogram the bus pirate if you don't do that the COM port will be stuck and you'll have to turn everything off and start over again that happened earlier in this demo so now we've got our firmware successfully built and again we'll just program it to the chip and see the COM port disappeared when the bus pirate went into programming mode the pick is programmed now so we release from reset it connects as a USB device and then we will connect with TerraTerm again and we get the prompt we're going to hit info and you see now we've got version A4 now I will go ahead and fix some bugs add Brent's new one wire library add the new UART functions and we'll do some testing and other evaluation I will come back and film anything that seems remotely interesting. Something cool I wanted to demonstrate is how diffs work and why we work in SVN. So here we've got the one wire replacement files from Brent and what we're going to do is drop these into the bus pirate source. You see here all these files have uh, green check marks and that means they're synced up to the current version that's in the SVN repository. So once we drag Brent's files in here, yes, we'll overwrite them. You can see we get the red exclamation mark. And what we can do is say SVN and diff. And in our case it brings up WinMerge, which shows the original file on the left at revision 1321 and the new working file over here here in the location pane you can see everything that's different between these two files and actually just a huge amount has changed but this is a quick way to skim through code and see where the differences have happened also now since we're using SVN if we make a problem there's an easy way to undo it so here in the firmware we've got the say we've made a mistake here somewhere we can just say SVN revert which is just a little bit I think out of the screen range it asks us what file to revert. We say OK. 
and it brings back the original file with no changes. We compiled the Bus Pirate firmware with Brent's new one-wire library routines. The reason we have new one-wire functions is because the original were licensed under the GPL, the General Public License. That's open source, but it requires that you redistribute your code as well. And the goal with the Bus Pirate is for everything to be public domain. You can prototype your project with it and then steal the code and use it however you want, put your own name on it, and you don't owe attribution or credit to anybody else. That makes Bus Pirate really flexible, so you use it to prototype and then you can use it in your own projects as well. We need a way to test the new one-wire routines though, and for that we'll be using Bus Pirate Demo Board version 4. The goal of our multiple demo boards was to find a way for people to quickly learn how to use the Bus Pirate with a standard set of parts on different buses. So here we have one wire, I squared C, and SPI. Uh, the problem with that is all these parts actually add up quite quickly and the boards have always been very expensive. That's why we're at version 4 and we still haven't released one. You may actually remember a few weeks ago I did a soldering video of actually soldering version 5 and that one will hopefully be the key that finally gets it into production by using a single chip to emulate a bunch of different chips. So Shock still has my Bus Pirate version 4 demo board uh, from our trip to Tokyo, so I need to solder this one up really quick. I'm only going to install one part on it, and that's this uh, TO92 uh, DS1822 temperature sensor. It's a one-wire sensor, and we'll just solder it up here so we can do a qu quick test with the new libraries. As, as a side note on one wire, my personal belief is one wire's days are limited. Uh, Dallas Maxim, the creator of one wire, is carrying fewer and fewer one wire parts. The last time I checked for a replacement for a one wire part that had discontinued, they actually suggested a two wire or I squared C part. Uh, so I think while the temperature sensors and the one wire EE problems are still fairly common, I don't think one wire is going to be with us for very long. Now we're going to go ahead and solder this up so that we can continue our testing. This is going to be a pretty quick soldering job because all the parts are through hole and we just have one here. I'm just going to use uh, some flux to make sure everything flows well and my standard 0.7 millimeter solder. Um, it's too bad it's not surface mount or I'd have the opportunity to try this tiny 0.3 millimeter solder I got to pick up last week in Akihabara. So we'll just solder this up real quick. Now that the demo board's done, I've connected it up to the Bus Pirate version 4. We've got the red wire to carry 3.3 volts from the Bus Pirate regulator to the demo board. The black wire is the shared ground. And over here we have a white wire for data. That's one wire data, which is why it's called one wire. If you're familiar with the Bus Pirate version 3, you'll notice one thing missing. And that's a wire for the pull-up voltage. On Bus Pirate version 3, you have to take a separate cable and connect it also to the power supply to power the pull-up resistors used by the one-wire bus. On the version 4, though, you can select between 3.3 volts, 5 volts, and an external pull-up voltage, all from software. So we don't need to make that extra connection with the version 4. That's one of the things I like best about the version 4 because that pull-up wire was always a pain, always something I forgot and causing other people problems, too. Now we'll take this back over to the computer bench and hook it up and I'll show you how we do the quick one wire demo to test out the new routines. Now we're ready to test out the one wire functions. We've got the bus pirate connected and we've opened the terminal to COM3. Hit enter to make sure it's there. We'll go into mode 2 for one wire. First thing we need to do is set up the bus pirate. So first we'll enable the onboard power supplies and turn on the pull up resistors. You see the pull-up resistors give us an error message that there's no pull-up voltage. On version 3, we would have to take a separate wire and connect it to the VPU pin and then connect it to the power supply we wanted to use. Uh, but with the version 4, we just use the E command and we can choose between three sources right here from software. In this case, contrary to what I talked about earlier, we're actually going to be using 5 volts in this demo. I had a little bug with, version, with the 3.3 volt supply. Now we can hit the V command to get the voltage reading. You can see that the 5 volts is reading 5 volts, 3.3 is almost 3.3, and the VPU is 4 volts, uh, 4.6 volts. 
Now we can get the list of macros available in one wire mode. Since there's only one device, we could use macro 51 to read the ROM address, but usually you have more than one device, and so we can use the search ROM function. And what that macro does is it searches, searches through all of the different uh, one wire addresses and makes a list of the ones we have attached. In this case, you see we just have one, and it's the DS1822 digital thermometer. This big long 8 byte address up here is the individual unique ID number for this thermometer. When you work with one wire devices, you end up typing in this number a whole bunch. You have to use it every time you address the device. So what we did was have the bus pirate save it as a macro. So now whenever you use macro 1, it will write the full 8-bit address for you. So to start off, we need to tell the thermometer to start a temperature conversion. And so we use the 85 match ROM command, and then we send the address, which is stored in macro 1, and then we send the command to start a temperature conversion. You see it did a bus reset, it sent the match address command, it sent the address, and then it sent the command to start the temperature conversion. Now if you were doing real software, you'd need to pull the DS1822 to make sure it was done with the temperature conversion before you write it out. But since the bus pirate is so slow, we don't need to do that. Uh, it's Usually the conversions are done by the time the bus pirate finishes telling us what it did. So now we'll do macro 85 again to match the address. We will send the same address again, but this time we're going to send the command to read out the temperature and we're going to read 9 bytes. Okay. Again we sent a bus reset, we sent the match address command, we sent the address, we wrote the command to read the temperature, and then we read out 9 bytes. We're only interested in the first two. The other bytes are status information and also a checksum. But this gives us the temperature info. It's in hex, so the actual temperature is uh, 017F. We'll put that here as 17F. And yes, these are flipped around. The order of these two bytes is inversed. We can convert that to decimal. And then in order to find the actual temperature, you multiply by 0 0.0625, which gives us about 24 degrees Celsius, which is a, a reasonable approximation of the temperature in here next to the soldering iron and all that stuff. So we know that now that the one, new one-wire routines are working well, and we'll move on to do some other bus pirate bug fixes. Now that the one wire is going, we can export the firmware to use with the bootloader so we can upload it to the forum and get some testers. And also we can put the changed code into SVN so we have a backup and so that other developers can work with it too. So the first thing we'll do is uh, export the code. This is bus pirate version 4 so we really don't have to do anything special here. We just say export file and we will put it in uh, just the main directory up here. And we'll save that file. Now we'll also do it for version 3. So we opened up so we opened up the version 3 source files and we changed the define in base.h from version 4 to version 3 and then we recompiled and it all fit. Uh, so now we'll export the version 4 3 firmware so that people can test that out too. And if you check the Compiling Pick Projects wiki page, it gives the end address for everything. And the end address for the Bus Pirate version 3 is A7FA with no configuration bits. Now we will also export that up here, but we'll call it Bus Pirate version 3. And we'll save that. And now that's ready to go into the forum for anybody who wants to test it. So now in the firmware directory we have a number of changes that we've made both to the project files but also the source files here and I made a little update in the translation so that's ready to go next time. Right, well first we need to add these two files. So we click on them, we say SVN add and now they are added to the repository and will be checked in the next time we check in changes. So I will select the files 
I want to update and right click SVN commit it gives you a list of the files we'll add a message so we add a log message describing the things we changed we're going to check in all those files and we just hit OK now the files are checked into Google uh, other developers can get the changes and the SVN will also provide help merging changes in case I change some code that Shock also worked on or something like that happened. That's the end of our first day of Bus Pirate video thing. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in developing on the Bus Pirate, give us a shout in the forum. New developers are always welcome and we'll help you get set up with SVN. Tomorrow we'll be back to talk about some hardware we've been developing for the Bus Pirate, some accessories, and the problems we're having with it and also we'll hopefully release the final version 6 firmware. Well, on this post, there should be a link to download the latest Bus Pirate firmware release candidate. Uh, give it a try. If you find something's not working, let us know in the forum. We'll do our best to work it out. Thanks a lot.